It's the story that everyone in America has been talking about. It's the case of Trayvon Martin, the Florida teen who was gunned down by a volunteer neighborhood watchman. The case has polarized America and has many people thinking about gun laws in their own states. To answer your questions this morning about the law, Attorney David Ailey, a very serious trial Tuesday that we've got this morning. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me. All right, so first and foremost, a lot of people now they're questioning I have a weapon in my home. What can I what can I do and what can't I do? So I think the best way we'll do it is we'll start off with a viewer question and you can answer answer it accordingly. So the first question is please explain castle doctrine. I want to protect my family, but after everything I've been seeing, I'm worried what I think is okay just isn't. And that's Johnny from Charleston. We really do appreciate your question. And he's got a great question there. It is a great question. It's actually something that we've uh, seen here a lot in South Carolina, mm -hmm. actually the Low Country related to the Castle Doctrine. Yeah. And that basically is that you can protect yourself or your family or anyone staying in your home. Uh, you know, if you do have intruders that come in to your house or your property, even uh, it goes as far as to looks like your uh, vehicles. We had that incident recently in James Island about a year ago mm -hmm. where um, person shot at someone who was, uh, you know, breaking into their vehicle. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you relate the Castle Doctrine to this situation is uh, basically the stand your ground law um, and is what is in reference in Florida is, you know, that you don't have the duty to retreat, similar to in the Castle Doctrine. For instance, in your, if someone tries to break in your home, you don't have to run out of your home and try to flee the area. Right. You can stand your ground, per se, at your house and protect yourself and your loved ones. Um, in, in the, you know, one-on-one -on -one scenario, like with what happened with Trayvon Martin, the law that they used was uh, you know stand your ground meaning you don't have to retreat when there's an attacker mm -hmm. uh, coming at you you can try to defend yourself in, including up to deadly force mm -hmm. and so that's where you know sort of the issue in lies in, in that tragedy is to whether or not that person should have been able to do that um, obviously there's a lot of people saying a lot of different things but in reality the investigation I think will you know turn out a lot yeah just bringing it locally I mean that exact same thing happened about a month ago in Latson uh, overnight someone says that the guy knocked on his window he tried to get in his car and he shot him shot him dead but at the same time that's the castle doctrine as well right exactly in the car and that was a different one too because he was actually in the vehicle mm -hmm. so that's something you know we hadn't really seen around here and I think it just shows you how strong at least in our state they look at the castle doctrine to protect yourself and also your property okay how much is considered your property and your castle someone would say if they're on your doorstep if they're on your front lawn I mean how far is close enough well, you know, ultimately, if they're in your property or approaching your property, I think within reason you're able to protect yourself mm -hmm. because, I mean, how far are you supposed to let them come before you, you know, stop? Very true. Very true. And especially for women out there, we had another question from another lady, but we won't get into it because these gun laws in South Carolina are, can get convoluted at times. What do you suggest someone does, David, if they're, they're just not sure? Well, then you don't need to have a gun if you don't know the gun laws in your own state. There you go. There you go. That's for sure. And also I wanted to ask, and I know a lot of you might be wondering out there, uh, different states have different laws when it comes to owning and carrying a gun. What should you do before you try to get a weapon? Should you just maybe go to your lawyer? Should you, I mean, go to a gun shop? What should you do? Well, gun shops always have all the information related to that state mm -hmm. and maybe some of the neighboring states. Yeah. But particularly the problem that you run into is exactly what you just said. Different states have different laws. I know within my own practice, I have a number of clients I've had in, uh, in the past and presently that, you know, will get charged with, you know, carrying a gun in the wrong place within their vehicle here in South Carolina. They say, hey, I'm from this other state. Mm -hmm. The law there is this. Well, you know, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You still get arrested for it. So if you're going to travel out of state with your weapon, you need to make sure you know where you're traveling and know what the laws are. You know, on, on a much smaller scale, just like you need to know if you're allowed to use a cell phone when you go into another you go. state. There you go. All right. Well, David Ayler, thank you so very much for being with us this morning. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, well, keep your questions coming. All you have to do is go to abcnews4.com, click on the Low Country Live tab on the right-hand side of your screen, and you'll find Trial Tuesdays right there. You can submit your questions, or you can even email them to us at lowcountrylive at abcnews4.com. All right, well, we're back with more Low Country Live coming up. Stay with us.